Hello and welcome back to guillotined 18th century chemist theater uh, to a lesson where we talk very little about chemistry. <laughs> uh, you know, the lines between physics and chemistry are rather arbitrary at times and, and many of the people who did a lot of the early work with uh, the atom were physicists, so I've got no problem with that. we got no bone to pick with our physicist friends. Um, in fact, one of the uh, most important physicists of all time, Max Planck, uh, really opened up the door for 20th century physics as a whole. It's funny, when he was uh, studying at university in the late uh, 19th century, um, he was told, really, don't bother going into physics because it's really been picked clean. And all you're going to do, I think, to, is uh, fill in some holes, it was put. And he was like, that's fine with me. I just want to learn about stuff. I'm not really that interested in discovering things. And the true irony is that what Max Planck would discover is really the most revolutionary idea in physics, the idea of quantized energy, which, again, allowed all of the important physics of the 20th century uh, to be born. Um, and, and led to, of course, the uh, quick discovery of a man named uh, Albert Einstein, and, and we all know about him. And uh, so anyway, uh, classical physics, any physics, really talks about the relationship between energy and uh, frequency, meaning as frequency goes up, energy goes up. Now, of course, you could look at the inverse relations of this uh, inverse relationship of energy to wavelength, meaning as the wavelength goes down, the energy goes up. Because remember that wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. It's a constant. But that doesn't mean the energy has to be a constant. As the frequency goes up, the energy goes up. And, and, and this, again, if you ever forget this, just look at your chart of electromagnetic radiation because you want to avoid things with, with very high frequency. Uh, that's the stuff that could damage you. You don't want to sit around in X-rays, cosmic rays, gamma rays, even ultraviolet light. These are all higher frequencies um, as opposed to uh, lower frequencies like radio waves. Not really a big deal there. Um, classical physics really thought that energy... Uh, or really, matter and energy were thought to be distinct as separate waves or waves, particles and particles, never the two shall meet. Um, but this guy right here, this again, this is Max Planck. Uh, and, and, and Max Planck uh, was studying something called black body radiation. And he discovered something that didn't make a lot of sense. Well, actually, other people had discovered that too. Um, based on classical physics, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I don't do the story justice, but um, you know, as, as you heated up a, a metal, uh, you know, it, got, it, it gave off different and different colors of light. Um, and so classical physics said as this thing continued to get heat up, the energy would continue to increase being given off of it. And if the energy was increased in being given off of it, that means that the frequency would also have to increase. And that means that classical physics predicted that if you were to continue to heat a body up and up and up, eventually it would be giving off ultraviolet light, which means it would be invisible to the naked eye. And this doesn't happen, obviously. Uh, things don't become invisible to the naked eye just because they get heated. And so that was a problem. Um, and so uh, Max Planck spent a long time trying to explain this with classical physics. Um, and eventually he had to, he had to uh, discard classical physics and accept some things that he wasn't quite happy with to, to actually try to explain it. And what he discovered is that uh, energy that everybody thought that could be given off in any amount possible wasn't. And the, the magic word is that the energy was quantized. All right, Energy could only be given off on certain things. Um, classical physics said energy was sort of like a violin, and you could get any sound you wanted out of that violin. Uh, but what Max Planck realized was that really this stuff was like a really gigantic xylophone. And I don't mean big keys, I mean like billions and billions of keys. And so it sounded continuous from our point of view, but it really wasn't. Um, you know, like you can imagine water coming at you or a waterfall, and you're like, wow, you could have any amount of water you wanted. But pretend that water only came in drops, and that's as small as it got. Um, that's really what Max Planck's discovered. Or, as I like to think of it, sort of like an ant staircase. Imagine you sitting on a hill that you thought was a nice, smooth hill, and then uh, you look very closely, and you realize it's not a hill at all. It's actually a tiny, ancient ant staircase, but you never bothered to look. Again, another example, think of a pixelated screen. You know, you think that you've got continuous color on your screen, but if you get really close, you realize that, you know, it's, it's pixelated. Or at least it used to be. Screens are getting pretty good nowadays. Uh, but anyway, these are all sort of metaphors to the idea that energy was quantized. All right, and, and, Pl and Planck would eventually publish this paper in, in 1900, where he would come up with the idea of um, energy isn't just proportional to uh, frequency, but it equals frequency if you if you uh, account for a constant. And this was uh, given the name Planck's constant uh, in tribute to him and his work. Uh, where E equals energy, our old friend Jules is back. Uh, 
course, nu is frequency in hertz or per seconds. And therefore, think about it, if we want E to be in joules, uh, then we need uh, H to be joules seconds. And that, again, was eventually given the name's Planck constant. Uh, Planck was really more of a theoretical physicist than an experimental physicist, so I don't actually think he came up with the number himself. I think an experimental physicist did that for him. Uh, but anyway, the value ended up being incredibly tiny, 6.6 .6 times uh, 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Um, and so that was sort of called the quantum of action, really the minimal piece that you could have. Uh, eventually, again, Einstein would realize that this energy was uh, due to a photon, uh, but um, that would come later. Uh, Max Planck certainly deserves uh, incredible credit for the idea of the idea of quantized energy. Even if it was very tiny, even if it was such a tiny step, you never really noticed the subtlety of it. Uh, energy was in fact quantized, and that again was was flew in the face of everything people understood about classic physics. Uh, after World War One, this would eventually win him the Nobel Prize, in fact, in physics, um, and lead to a great TV show in the '80s, of course. Quantum Leap. Any Quantum Leap fans? <laughs> Anything? Anybody? No. So uh, we can actually look at uh, some examples of this mathematically. Why don't we throw this into the math that we were doing last time? So let's take some light. We've got a certain uh, uh, wavelength there. All right, what quantum of energy is emitted? Well, we know that E equals Planck's constant times nu. We know that C equals lambda times nu, and we've got some information we pulled out of the problem there. Uh, we don't actually have frequency, we have wavelength. So we can take C, we can solve for uh, nu, and then, of course, we can always substitute in and replace nu with c over lambda. So it's the same equation. It's just accounting for the fact that c over lambda equals nu. Um, anyway, we, of course, have to get things to the right units, as always. So wavelength will go to meters. Um, and then if we take a look at everything, if we start putting everything together, we get Planck's constant, which, of course, looks weird. Uh, 6.626 times, uh, times 10 to the negative fourth joule seconds. Um, and then we have the speed of light, uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, over 4.5 times 10 to the 7th meters. Meters and meters cancels out, seconds and per seconds cancels out, and we are left with beautiful energy, 4.4 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And so it's kind of neat how we can take the equations from last time and this time and actually determine the energy of any given wavelength. Or, in this case, uh, any, uh, well actually in this case, any given wavelength or frequency, either one will work. And so you should be definitely be able to calculate that either way, given wavelength or frequency. Now again, we are just, uh, just dipping our toes in the edge of this now, and there's gigantic ramifications for quantized energy. So we really didn't get into the big quant uh, ramifications and what, what happened with Einstein and Bohr and, and modern atomic theory later. Um, but, but hopefully you got this. This is, this is definitely uh, starting <laughs> to the edge of what we understand, because people are going to then realize that uh, sometimes light acts like a wave and sometimes it acts like a particle. Um, very, very weird stuff. And so we'll continue to sort of uh, enjoy the mystery of this all. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Um, it's interesting, by the way, before, <laughs> before, I, before I hang up here. Uh, Planck, Planck really didn't like what he discovered. He did it out of desperation and he did it because it worked, but he always hoped that later in life he was able to, he was going to be able to tie this into classic physics. Never could, never could. And thus began many scientists' love-hate affair with what they actually found in quantum mechanics. To be continued.